two types of happiness shreya and preya the vedas speak about two kinds of pleasure shreya and preya shreya is that pleasure which seems bitter in the beginning but once but becomes very sweet in the long run preya is that pleasure which seems pleasant in the beginning but causes great pain later the difference between them is akin to delayed gratification versus immediate gratification an example of shreya is eating of amla or the indian gooseberry amla is a super superfood that is very beneficial for health each amla has the vitamin c of 10 oranges however children dislike it since it has a bitter taste parents in india encourage children to eat it saying amle ka khaya aur bado ka kaha baad mein pata chalta hai the benefit of both these eating amla and following the advice of elders are experienced in the future interestingly within a couple of minutes of eating the amla the bitter taste in the mouth transforms into sweetness and the long term benefit of consuming natural vitamin c are undoubtedly numerous shreya happiness is of the same nature it appears bitter in the short term but is like nectar in the end priya is the opposite it seems like ambrosia initially but proves to be poisonous in the end regarding shreya and priya the katho the katho upanishad of krishna yajur ved states there are two paths one beneficial and the other pleasant these two lead humans to a very different ends the pleasant is enjoyable in the beginning and ends in pain the ignored ignorant are sneer to the pleasant and perish but the wise are not deceived by its attraction they choose the beneficial one and finally attain happiness with the help of this understanding we feel empowered to modify bad habits first we must repeatedly an- analyze and convince ourselves of the benefit that will accrue from changing negative habits second we must reflect deeply on the pain that will be caused by not changing we can enumerate all the pleasures and pains benefits and harmful effects advantages and disadvantages for example if we wish to develop the habit of setting aside a half hour every day for exercise a possible analysis could be happiness from cultivating the habit of exercising for 30 minutes daily one improved well being two continued usefulness three feeling of time well spent four more mental clarity five improved self image six reduction of bad cholesterol seven development of a healthy heart eight improved muscle mass nine more appealing personality ten greater stamina for work pain from not cultivating this healthy habit one unhealthy body two lethargy three weight gain four forced to buy new clothes five displeasure of spouse six lack of self confidence among friends seven earlier onset of old age eight increased risk of blood sugar and diabetes nine weak self image ten lack of self control and will power this is a simple analysis for developing a good habit now we wish to get rid of a bad habit how should we convince ourselves we can list the happiness we will get by eradicating it we should also make a list of the pain if we continue with it for example if we wish to break the habit of eating junk food a possible analysis would be happiness from breaking the habit of eating junk food one weight control two reduce risk of diabetes three focus on more nutritious diet four longer and healthier life five improved self image six the feel good factor of a better conscience seven more appealing personality eight greater stamina for work nine financial savings ten spouse's satisfaction and respect pain from continuing the habit of eating junk food one obesity two displeasure of spouse three lack of self control and will power four discomfort of consign 
for not doing what is proper. Five, poor self-image due to weak will. Six, disrespect of friends and well-wishers. Seven, shorter and unhealthier life. Eight, reduced energy for work. Nine, early onset of old age. Ten, increased risk of diabetes. We must deeply convince ourselves of the painful consequences of bad habits and the peace of mind that accrues from good habits. The technique of contemplation, chintan, reflect upon a piece of knowledge to transform it into a conviction, will be elaborated in the fifth chapter. When we are deeply convinced about the benefit of a certain thought pattern or action, we naturally try to adopt it. It grows on us every time we practice it. With sufficient repetition, the new thought or behavior solidifies into a new habit, replacing the old one. Then one day, like the firm drop made from punny blades of straw, the new behavior becomes an integral part of our personality. This is how we develop a great personality with a shining character forged from virtuous habits. Jagat Guru Kripaluji Maharaj recommended spending a few minutes for introspection before going to bed every day to reflect on where we improved our behavior and where we needed to put in more effort. He advised maintaining a diary for the purpose. A diary or journal is a powerful tool for staying on track in the effort of for self-improvement. Mahatma Gandhi was fond of maintaining a self-improvement diary. Benjamin Franklin is, is another famous example of someone who used a diary for establishing good habits. His efforts for self-transformation are chronicled in the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin. He had a list of 13 habits that he wanted to change. He jotted them down and then focused on one habit every week. He kept track of it daily, documenting whether he practiced it or not. A simple check mark indicated a success while a cross indicated failure. At the end of the week, he would see how well he was adopting the habit of the week. Breaking the Gravitational Pull of Bad Habits The best time to overcome bad habits is before they are established. A rational intellect must evaluate their cumulative power. Drinking a peg of alcohol may not be bad for health in a day, but over the years, ingesting hundreds of gallons will definitely be unhealthy for us. An action when done just once is negligible but becomes very significant when it is repeated over an extended period of time. However, if bad habits have already been created, they do, they do not go away on their own. They are always undo-it-yourself projects. They are like cables formed from iron strands. Individually, the strands can be snapped with a little effort. But tied together, they become a formidable cable with the strength to lift many tons of weight likewise. Stray actions are easy to correct, but once etched as habit by force of repetition, they possess a strength that becomes difficult to break. As a result, changing old habits is never easy. It is like launching a rocket into space. In the first few minutes of the flight, as the rocket breaks through the downward pull of gravity, maximum fuel is needed. Once the, ex once the escape velocity has been achieved, the energy consumed becomes marginal and the rocket is partially propelled by its own momentum. Hence, more fuel is consumed in the liftoff than in the millions of miles of travel that follows. The same applies to habits. They exert a gravitational force on our personality that must be broken with patience, commitment and understanding. The liftoff demands tremendous efforts. But once we break out of the gravitational pull of shackling habits, our freedom acquires a completely new dimension. So, how can we achieve this lift off? The Importance of Willpower Changing habits can be a profitable task, but also one of the most challenging. Uprooting bad habits that have been growing up to become mighty oaks in no child's play. Even the slightest progress in this direction requires self-control to resist bad behavior and act upon the good one. Thus, we may read the best books and hear the best knowledge, but we are lacking in willpower. 
we will not be able to benefit from this information. The gap between knowledge and its practice must always be bridged by discipline. Abundance of willpower provides us the strength to resist animal-like impulses when they raise their head. Hence, it is on the bedrock of self-restraint that we must build habits that will bestow on us a lifetime of courage, forbearance, and peace. In reality, a lack of self-control is akin to a mental disease that makes us feeble and irresolute. When we see this weakness within, we must make it a priority to stamp it out. We develop self-discipline by exercising it in much the same way as we build our muscles. Every time we follow through on a resolution, we liberate the force of willpower within. But each time we break our resolve and not to indulge in Since pleasures, the pleasure of self-control becomes emanciated. In this way, small moment-to-moment victories lead to larger success. The more we exert our willpower, the later it grows. But if we neglect it, our self-discipline will dwindle and wither away, like unused muscle in the body. Let us exert ourselves courageously to fight the gravitational pull of our bad habits. Once the new habit begins to grow, it becomes progressively easier and then one day the desired behavior comes naturally. When we see people with stellar qualities, we wonder how they reach there. Well, it was all a matter of exerting their willpowers for some time until the new habit kicked in. As simple as that, understanding this, let us push push ourselves to unleash the power of a controlled mind and an illumined intellect. I have covered this topic in great detail in my book, Seven Mindset for Success, Fulfillment and Happiness. Having said this, a word of caution is again necessary, for changing habits is never easy. Even when the change seems to have been effected, there is always a danger of falling back into old behavior and thought patterns. The reason is that the basal ganglia remembers the context that triggers a habit, so old habits can be revived without triggers appear. Can be revived whenever triggers reappear. Thus, it is important while endeavoring to change to warily avoid the triggers that previously reinforced the old time, old habit. With a firm decision to transform. We should exercise utmost care to sidestep the context conducive to old habits. Such a firm decision requires the intellect to become resolute and illuminated. Our decision can on habits has naturally led to the topic of the intellect. What is its function and how is it different from the mind? We consider this question in the next chapter.